Hi, I'm Danielle with Stitching Designs. Welcome back to my channel. I have another sew along for you today. It is from K&A Custom Fabrics and Hardware. It's the light up Pokemon ball. This thing is so stinking cute. Like I absolutely love it. So you can kind of, minus the glare, so you can see you got your trainers, you got Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Poke or Pikachu, and Charmander. They're so cute. And then on the back we got Pokemon, and then I got a cute little tag. So I still need to put the zipper poles, the Pokeball zipper poles that go on for this bag that coordinate with it. I still need to put them on, but you'll see in the video I do put a picture of what they look like inside and then in the description I will also link a video on if you are ever working on a bag and you don't have your zipper poles yet, how if they're, especially if they're the dangle types, how you can easily swap them out for to use something else in the meantime while you're waiting for something to arrive. So we also have Pokeball webbing. So this is the crossbody. So it's super cute webbing for the straps. And then at the very end of this video, I do show you guys how to make this or any of the circle so long bags that I do for k &A, how to make them into a backpack. So it's just a couple little switching of hardware and placements and everything. But this could easily go for go for a crossbody or a backpack. Just depends on personal preference of it. And if you want to see it all lit up, well, you gotta wait till the very end. So not gonna spoil any of the surprises. So, but yes, this is a light up shadow bag. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. When you get your project bag, it's gonna look like this. Or your sew along, I should say. So we got a few different things in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go over a couple pieces here. So this is our exterior back. We have our gusset. We have our two zipper gussets. We have D-rings. These ones, I'm not quite sure what these ones are for. When I figure that out, I'll let you guys know, but in the meantime, I'm gonna keep going. This is our, one of our, so we have two lining pieces. So one is going to go on the back and one is going to get turned into a slip pocket. It doesn't really matter which one you go with, but either way, then we have our gusset lining, our zipper gusset linings. And these ones are, are new. So in previous videos, I've talked about how sometimes if you're doing this on a domestic machine, depending on your domestic machine, sometimes doing all the layers in the vinyl it gets a little bit bulky and it's a little bit harder to do well talking with alex and now she's added these in water resistant canvas so now you can use these as your d-rings for the exterior yes they're a little bit brighter of a black than your than your exterior just like there there's it's def, there's a color difference in them but you can use these as your D-rings and it's gonna help your machines. It's not gonna be as bulky. It'll be a little bit easier to work with. If you don't wanna use these for your D-rings, you don't have to. You can use you can use the vinyl ones. It really doesn't matter. It's just th these are there as an option for you guys if you're work depending on which machine you're doing or what you're working with. And then I'm so excited for the front. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. Oh, there we go, a little, little less glare. Oh my gosh, okay, let's see if I know everybody's name because I'm absolutely horrible. I don't know the main, like the um, the trainers. I can't remember their names, but we got, of course, Pikachu. We got Char Charmander. We got Squirtle. Oh my gosh, I can't remember his name, but I like I know the character. He's super cute. He's got the little vine things that come out of the back. Oh. Bulbasaur, there we go. I knew it. Yes. Woo! -hoo! Two points for me. <laughs> My husband would be so proud. <laughs> He's a huge Pokemon fan and like played the game, collected the cards, the whole nine yards, totally grew up on it. I did not. My sister kind of got into Pokemon. I, I never did. I was, I was one of those kids that just didn't get into Pokemon. I can appreciate how adorable some of the characters are. Absolutely. Charmander is adorable. Love Charmander. Pikachu is pretty darn cute. Oops. From opening it. Okay, so that's all the pieces. I'm going to go ahead and get these all cut out. So a couple things you'll also need to cut out, I'll just tell you now. 
So we have our circle here. You're going to want to cut out a piece of Decoville Heavy or Decoville Light, depending on what you want to use. And then, so you want to make sure that it is at least a quarter inch smaller all the way around than this. If you do a, like maybe three eighths inch smaller all the way around, it'd be even better. You'll also need Decoville Light or Heavy. It's your preference on what you want to use. You also need it for your bottom gusset. And then I like to add it for the top zipper gussets as well because it just helps give it keep the round shape. And so you'll need to have be a half inch smaller lengthwise on both of these and then a half inch smaller narrower on these. So you can measure these out, go half inch shorter and a half inch smaller this way. So then it balances out to be a quarter inch on each side. So you'll do that for all four pieces. So a couple other things that you're going to need to cut out. So for the Pokemon bag, you're going to need jelly binding or you can use clear. It's completely your preference on what you want to do that. I like to cut mine about an inch and a quarter wide. You can do an inch might just be a little bit tougher, but it's still doable. And then I do it the width of the jelly or I think I cut these to. Let me see what I cut these to because you really don't need it to be 54 inches. So let's double check what I got this one to. So I have these at 45. I probably won't use all of that. So when, so now that I know that I'm starting with 45, when I finish adding these on, I'll measure the excess and then I'll give you more of an exact. So then we also have some webbing that we're going to use for the crossbody strap. This is super cute. I love this one. Then I'm going to be using some web, some zipper tape from K&A. And then of course you're going to need two swivel clasps, two D rings. You could also use rectangles or triangles, whatever you have on hand. And then you'll need a slide adjuster. The zipper poles for this that are going to be the super cute Pokeballs are not here yet. So I'm going to be using just some generic zipper poles and then I will be swapping them out. So although there's a link the video down below in how to be able to swap these out. So if you're ever working on a project that's not here yet or you don't have the zipper poles here yet. And if they're the dangle type, they're really easy to swap out. So we got those. I'm also using a cute little sew-in tag from Mormino. And then you'll also include it in this cut and the sew along will be the lights. So you're gonna be getting white EL wire. So you wanna make sure to place some batteries in it. Batteries are not included. So you just add those in, make sure you line up the prongs and just double check that your light works. I'm gonna put it underneath and you can see underneath my desk that my light wire does indeed work. Perfect. So always double check that and sometimes the battery pack will emit a noise and some of them are really quiet. Some of them can be really loud. It's a toss up what you're going to get. You, It's no fault to K&As for what they get. It just that's how some of them come and you can't help it. But if the noise does bother you, you can use the foam stabilizer and you can cut out a piece to make like a little pocket for it and then you can set it in that and that will help muffle the sound of the battery pack and then once you put it in the bag if you add the foam into it too it'll really help reduce the noise for it if it bugs you and so I already have all my pieces cut out so my one exterior circle I have Decoville heavy on top of that for my smaller pieces I have Decoville heavy on my gusset and also on my zipper gusset pieces. You can use Decoville Light if you want to, if that's a personal preference. I also ironed my lining pieces and your lining pieces are gonna be a little bit bigger than your exterior pieces and it's intentional that way because it's easier to trim them down because sometimes things get printed kind of funky. But all we have to do is just when we're, as we're going, we'll trim it down to the appropriate size so you guys don't have to worry about doing it right all up front. Here is the clear for the front. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And so what's cool is like, so we have our back here. And so then when you look through the back, it'll be a little bit further away, but it'll help like add an extra little bit of color 
to your Pokemon characters. Oh, it looks so good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. All right, we're gonna start with the crossbody strap. So I like to do my crossbody straps at a yard and a half. So 50, usually like 52 to 54, somewhere in there is where the length that I normally like to use. But that's also, if you like them a little bit longer, go longer. If you like them shorter, go shorter. Make sure to heat seal your ends. I'll end up heat sealing this a couple times because as I sew it onto around the hardware, it kind of, it can get a little, little fuzzed up. So I like to, I'll heat seal it a second time. All right, so we'll start with our slide adjuster. I'm gonna take my webbing, I'm gonna go up and over the center bar. So let me zoom in. So this is what it looks like. So my bar is right in the middle. And then if you like, you can sew this down however you like. If you wanna make a box, if you wanna, however you wanna do, make an X. I just sew a line back and forth. Oops, there we go, stay in frame. I just sew a line back and forth right there. Make it, make it simple. And then I'm not using a bunch of the webbing. Okay, once you got the swivel clasps or the slide adjusters sewn on, we're gonna slide our hands all the way down to the other end. This just ensures that there's no twists. I'm going to hold my swivel clasp like this. I'm gonna go through and then go back. And so just ensure like when you look at your webbing, you make sure that there are no twists in there. And then from our slide adjuster, we're gonna go up one side, pull some slack. We're gonna go over the center bar and the webbing that we just sewn and go down the other side. So it's gonna look like, like so. And then we're gonna grab our other slide adjuster, swivel clasp, we're gonna Hold it, we're gonna go in and then loop it on itself. So then double checking before I sew everything down. We have no twists, everything looks good. And then sew that down the same way you did around the slide adjuster. Okay, and once you got it all trimmed up, you can go ahead and set your crossbody strap aside. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our slip pocket. So it doesn't matter which one, you're just gonna pick one. We're going to fold it in half, or if you wanna fold it more properly in half, you can find your center. Or yeah, I'll kinda give it, I just gave it a little bit of a crease on either end. All right, so that down. And we're going to, I'm just going to crease it. Okay, that all looks good. All right, and then we're just going to top stitch this at an eighth of an inch. All right, and before we get too, cur too far away, we're going to do our first thing to prep for the lights. So the one of the things, and I didn't mention this earlier, you will need a little like quarter inch grommet eyelet. I honestly don't know what those are called. Let's call it a grommet. No, I think a grommet has the backing piece thing to it. I don't know. Anyway, so, we're, so let's call it an eyelet. And we're going to add our eyelet to our pocket because our battery pack is going to sit in one of in one half of our pocket and then from there it'll come out of the pocket and then go into the bag so we want it in the, towards the middle of our pocket piece so i'm creasing that in the middle okay so since we have our crease we don't want to necessarily put the hole right here at the bottom because we have to account for our seam allowance so i'm going to bring it up a little bit higher Let's go about there. Okay. We've now got our hole punch. We're going to add our little eyelet piece right through there. And then 
use our little tool and we're going to smush it. <laughs> smush it. Ah! I, I absolutely love <laughs> Emperor's New Group. Such a good movie. Okay, yeah, and I'm not going to squish it too much because I don't want it to bend. So now we got that little piece. So part one of being able to prep for our light wire is now complete. So then let's find the center of our other one, kind of lining up our color fade a little bit. Throw a clip on that one. That way we get more of it. So that way our color fade's not quite off center. And then I'm gonna line up my crease that I did on the pocket piece with the bottom snip. Clip all of that together. All right, so then we got that. And so now I will baste along the edges here and then I will sew straight down the middle. And then I like to sew from the bottom upwards. That's just me. Then we're going to grab our back exterior. We're going to keep the Pokemon. I'm going to let me zoom out. There we go. So when we want the bottom of the Pokemon to be center, unless you, if you want it to be, if you want it to go like on the side like that, you totally can. You can have it go like a little off center, the other way, upside down if you really wanted to. But I'm going to try to keep it centered the best I can. So I'm kind of kind of pinch. So what I'm doing is my using my fingers to help pinch at the edge of the letters, kind of eyeballing it. Okay, let's call that and then throw a clip on there. I don't want to necessarily. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some cl other clips on there. Work my way up to the top. Okay, so we got kind of looks pretty centered. Let's go. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a little notch. That way, if it's not completely center, I can always redo it. Yep. So I really like how that looks for centeredness part of it. And then before I base these together, I'm gonna grab my label. If you have one of the really cool metal ones that KA does, you could add it to the back of the bag however you want to add it. I'm just going to use my embroidered ones and I'm going to add it to the inside of my, my pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and add that on and then we'll base these guys together. Okay, we're going to grab our exterior and our lining piece and we're going to line up our notches on the top and the bottom. And just a reminder that our lining is larger than our exterior. So we want to be careful and mind, mindful of where our little eyelid is. So I'm actually going to line up the bottom, truly line up the bottom of the circle and then let the top hang over. So adding a couple clips around my circle to help hold it. That kind of works. And so we're going to do it with the exterior side facing up so you can see how much bigger the circle is. Okay, and then you're going to, so this exterior side up, you're going to baste around your circle at an eighth of an inch. Once you're done basting the lining and the exterior together, you're going to go ahead and trim off all of the excess of your lining. Okay, hey, once you got that all trimmed up, you can go ahead and set this piece aside for the time being. Okay, let's grab our, well, keep our zipper pulls close. We're going to have our zipper tape and we're going to need our zipper gusset pieces for the lining and our exterior. For our zipper tape, make sure to heat seal my one end. I always like to have my zipper tape just a tiny bit longer than the actual zipper gusset part itself. So 
trim that down and heat seal my other end. So I will add my zipper poles after I'm done. So then I'm gonna take the right side of my zipper with the right side of my exterior and I'm gonna lay right sides together. And then go ahead and then clip those on. We're lining up the edge of our zipper with the edge of our exterior. We're gonna sew that down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we're gonna grab our lining piece and we're going to line, take the right side. So green is the right side, white is the wrong side. So we're gonna take the right side and lay it to the wrong side of our, oop, before I get too far away ahead of myself. So since that one already has a zipper on it, I'm just going to do this on my other one. We need to trim down our zipper gusset. I almost forgot because that would have been bad because that's how much extra we have. Definitely don't want to be utilizing that. So trim down that one. And then let's do our other one. And then while we're trimming, we can do our zipper gusset too. And then if it's wider this way, that's totally fine because when we're done, we can trim off the excess that way. Oh, make sure everything looks good. Up. Not as much excess on the zipper gusset as the, or on the gusset as the zipper gussets. Okay, now we can continue on. <laughs> so we take the right side and we're gonna put it onto the wrong side of our zipper. We're making sure that we're taking our lining and we're lining up the top edge here along with our edge here as well. And you're gonna clip all of that together. Once you finish clipping it, you're going to sew through all, you're gonna th sew through the little sam zipper sandwich at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, once it's sewn together, you're going to then pull back the exterior and the lining. You're going to put those wrong sides together and just pinch along the zipper where you had just sewn. You don't want to pull them apart super hard because then if you pull too hard, you can cause your zipper to go wavy. You just wanna go along and I'm just pinching and doing a slight pull, but it's mainly just trying to pull my lining and my exterior to meet. And then I'm just pinching as I'm going down. And then once you get it all pinched, then you can lay it down and then do a nice little finger press. Once you got it finger pressed and everything is lined up, you can go ahead and top stitch your zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, right, so everything that we just did on this side, we're going to repeat it for our other side as well. Once you got both of your sides of your zipper all finished, we're going to grab our zipper poles. And again, I am just using some basic dangle ones. My, the Pokeball ones have not arrived in time and I will link the video down below on how to swap out your zipper poles. So we're gonna take a look at what our zipper teeth are looking like. So they look pretty darn even. So I'm gonna pull those apart. If you have a zipper jig, then you don't really have to worry about necessarily this part. So we're going to slide in one side of your zipper. We're gonna add the other one. And then we're going to look through the back of our zipper. Let me zoom in. There we go, and that way I'm under some light so you guys can hopefully see. So we got the one side in, Oop, a little too, too much of that one side. Adding this side. So I'm just gonna show you real quick what it would look like. So that side is definitely coming out higher. So I'm gonna show you what that would look like if I were to put that on. See how we get that little bulge that goes out to that one side? So it looks, looks kind of funny. So we definitely don't want that. Since they started pretty even, we want to make sure they come out even as well. So you just kind of work your teeth around, moving them up and down, 
trying to get them to rework. There we go. Now they look about what they did before I pull them apart. And so now you can see the zipper, it looks even. There's no big bulge to one side or the other. And then we're gonna repeat that same process to our other side. Perfect, and we got our zippers, double zipper pull, and it looks beautiful. All right, so before I forget to add our D-rings, I'm gonna do the D-ring tabs real quick. The tabs are two inches wide, so we're going to mark the center, which will be our one inch. If you want to, you can add a piece of double-sided stick tape right across the line. And then that way when it's all, then you can fold it over and then it will help hold it in place. I tend to skip that part and I just hold it down. So my one piece will fold, it folds over and meets at the middle. And I just sew it down at an eighth of an inch. And then my second one, I do the same thing. I fold it over, I meet that center line and I butt it up against the one I just did. And so this would be our chain stitching. So I'm gonna to continue to sew down this one. I'll rotate, fold over the other side, sew across, and then go back up the other side doing the same thing on this side. Okay, once you got them trimmed apart, you're gonna grab your D-rings, you're gonna slide them on. Or if you're using triangles, rectangles, it's circles, it is all good, whatever, you, whichever sh hardware shape you're using. All right, so then we're going to add these right in here in the seam allowance. So let's see how much hangover I have. So I have a half inch hangover of my D-ring tabs across here. So I'm going to just base that on in place just to help it hold it down while I am, before we add the, the bottom gusset. Okay, then we're gonna grab our gusset. We're gonna line up along the edge here. Let me zoom back in. So we're lining up right here. We're gonna clip that in place and we're going to sew that down at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you got that sewn down at a quarter inch, you're gonna flip this over and you're going to add your other lining piece. We're gonna add linings right sides together. We're lining up our top along here and we're also making sure that we're centered left and right as well. We're gonna clip that down and we're going to sew across this at a half inch seam allowance. Okay, once you finish that one side, you're gonna turn, turn it over and you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side as well. So for these, it might be easier if you did a, I'm gonna put a little note in the, whenever we're doing this, cause as you're going, it, like it, it, depending on your the foot you're using, it gets pretty close right here. So if the half inch hangover, if you're using the shorter D-ring tabs, gets a little too close for your foot, then I would then swap this over to a quarter inch. If you are able to, if you can do the half inch hangover, then they'll be, it'll be snug up to that. And that's what it'll look like. Okay, and we're going to then, I like to crease or fold these at the seams right here. I add a couple clips there kind of help hold everything in place. And then I like, and then turn your gusset part out. Sometimes you might notice that when you turn out your gusset, it fits better if the lining faces out or sometimes it fits better if the exterior faces out. So we can see, this is what it looks like with my lining facing out. So I'm gonna flip this. And yeah, right now the looks like the lining, it fits better with the gusset, the exterior facing outward. 
So I just kind of readjust my clips a little bit. And then I like to clip along the lining and the exterior together because this will just help hold everything in place when we go to baste it all together and make one big old gusset circle. But we are getting there. We are getting there. I am excited. I'm so excited to see this all lit up. Like, oh my gosh. When Alex like shows me her artwork, I'm just like, oh my gosh, Alex, you're freaking insanely talented. And then it's just like the time that I see it drawn up to when I actually see it lit up is like, sometimes it takes forever, but it's just, oh, oh it's so much fun. It's so cool. Okay, so once you got it all clipped together, you're going to then baste your pieces all together. Okay, and then once you got it all basted together, you can see how much wider the gusset was than my actual, the lining part was than my exterior. You're gonna go around and you're gonna trim off your excess of your lining. All right, with your gusset completely trimmed up, ready to go, I'm gonna line up our, my seams were for my zipper gusset to my gusset. I just like to put a clip there, just kind of hold it in place. Because then we're going to kind of crease it and we're going to find our centers for our top and bottom. And then before I forget, I'm going to add my little label. Well, I've done a couple of them with the label on the outside. Do I want to do that on the outside again? How to stitch them all? Like, do I want to put it on the bottom? Do I? Because I'm just like, where do I? Where do I want to put it? Do I want to put it there? Let's put it on the bottom, like towards the bottom. Let's put it on this side. Okay, we're going to put it on the outside. I'm going to stitch that down now so I don't forget or do something weird. So I got my little cute little tag there. So we want to start with our normally four basic circle bags or just bags in general. I like to start with the front because the front you have the most maneuverability and the most like give of the bag itself. And you want the, because the front is what you're going to see the most of. So you want it to look the nicest. Well, unfortunately because of the EL wire, we have to start with the back. So we're going to line up. So we're going to turn our gusset wrong side out or lining side out. We're going to line up our notch from our top of our exterior with the top notch of our bag gusset. Throw a couple clips up there. Where's my bottom one? There's my bottom. So just line those up. And then you're going to go around clipping your exterior circle and your gusset together. Okay, once you got it all clipped together, you're going to find an opening somewhere in your clips. And you're going to sew around at an eighth of an inch. So the biggest trick that I, or advice I can give when doing the circle bag, you want to try to keep, so I have my gusset down here my exterior circle up here. You wanna to try to keep those lined up, of course, but then you want to keep it, when you're going to your foot, you wanna keep this area right in front as flat as you possibly can. That's going to help reduce your amount of puckers that you can get. 
And if you need to, so you can see my circle is not lined up with my exterior right here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. There we go. So you can see that they're not quite lined up. So my hand is on the inside. So I'm put using my fingers to push my ex top exterior out to keep them lined up. I'm just using a mechanical pencil to kind of like keep pressure on it. So you just want to keep make sure that you keep everything flat and lined up as you're going around. All right, so we're going to grab our EL wire. Since now that you are done sewing your bag all together, if you do have any areas that do stick up quite a bit, you want to trim, tr just trim those down because that will just help when sewing your seam allowance all together. So I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. All right, we're gonna, I think this should fit. I might need my little, use these guys to get it to go in there. So we're going to push the, so this is the end. So it's got the little cap on it. So that's the end of our light wire. We're going to stick that through the grommets. If or eyelet if it will fit. I think it should fit because eh, maybe not. Okay. So if it doesn't fit, you're going to pull your cap off and make sure to save this cap because at least my, my theory is if it came with something on the end, it should keep something on the end when we're done playing with it or using it. So I don't, eh, I might need those still. So keep that in a safe spot. And then if when we're done, if your cap, if you can't get your cap back on, there's a few other things that you can do to be able to keep the wire at the end covered up. All right, if you, you can put a little bend. So I put a little bend into mine. So if you don't, because I'm going to show you if you don't have your the little cool hemostat thingies. Left-handed, or maybe putting the light in before we add the gusset might make this a little bit easier. More than likely, it would be easier. Woohoo! All right, got that through. So we're gonna pull all of our light wire through, and so when it gets down to this little the heat shrink area, you're not gonna be able to pull that part through. So that's just gonna stay inside your pocket. So we got all of our wire hanging out. And then we're going to pre do a little pre-stitch. So normally when we're doing this, if we because we're adding our wire here, you would have to eventually jump the wire at some point. And so then the area that you're not, that you jump, it's not being sewn on the bag. So to be able to help prevent any areas of your bag not actually getting sewn, we're going to add a little pre-stitch in this area of where we would be jumping. And we're going to sew that at a quarter inch seam allowance. And so it's about an inch-ish wide. All right, so, we, so you can see my pre-stitched right there. So then that's nice when I bring my wire up and I bring it across and I go over to the other side. When I jump over the wire, I don't have to worry that that's not being sewn down. It's already sewn down and I have a decent air size area to be able to maneuver and figure out where I want my wire to go and jumping and all that good fun stuff. All right, where's my binding? So you're going to want to grab your jelly binding or you can use clear. So the EL wire that you're going to get from K&A that's included in this sew along is white. So the wire is white. If you wanted to purchase from another source, a different color wire, you can do that. Or another option is you can use different color e um, jelly. So you can use yellow. If you check out the Doctor Who sew along, I use like a golden yellow jelly 
with white white eel wire and it kind of gives it a yellowish tint color to it you can use different color jelly to be able to change the color of the like the glow effect that you want if you don't have any jelly but you have clear vinyl the clear tpu is more flexible and soft and that's gonna that would make amazing binding if you only have pvc which this is pvc as well for clear or jelly the pvc will work just as well it's a little bit stiffer but it will still work but if you have tpu tpu would be really it would be really nice so we're going to take our end we're going to so right here where we sewn our gusset and our exterior you can see the two pieces right there we're going to go around and we're going to lay our eel wire right on top of that seam there so to start we're going to put our jelly so i'm going to have it start yeah right there there we go so i have it's not quite it's not completely covering it like this i have it just over to the side and we want to push all of our excess of our binding to the side that we can't see because we can see this side so we can't see the other side so we don't know if we're missing the other side if you put it evenly you could miss the other side so that's why i always like to cut it a little bit bigger and then push the excess to the other side to make sure that it's going to get caught and then plus once we're done we can trim off the excess anyway so then who's going to know right so you're just going to go around you're going to clip you're going to feel your wire and you're going to place your jelly or your whatever binding type of binding you're using over the top and you're just going to clip all the way around and when we get back to where we started i will explain that part for you guys there okay so as i'm getting closer to my el where i need to jump across make sure i'm holding pressure on the one wire oh this is going to be interesting Okie dokie. I think I need to jump. So you're going to get as close as you can without actually sewing over it. That's a, a really important thing. Technically, yes. If you hit this, if you sew on this, yes, you have the chance that nothing's going to happen. But at the same time, if you accidentally sew through this and you hit the wrong spot in the wire, it could ruin the, the essentially ruin the whole line. And so then you'll when you're done and you go to turn it on it won't work so that is a risk of doing of doing this that is a a very high risk so that's why i like to do that pre-stitch so even if you do a bigger jump then you, at least that area is stitched so i'm using my pencil to kind of push that wire out of the way pushing this down making sure i'm still at three eighths Okay, and I jumped it, so I'm going to bring my needle down. Oh, yeah, I'm good. I definitely missed that. So, yeah, definitely take your time when you're jumping across your wire. You really don't want to hit your wire. Once you're all done sewing your binding on, go ahead and trim down your excess. So, I like to so to make sure to do the inside and the back the outside as well or both sides of the binding now that you got your binding all trimmed up we're going to go ahead and find the center of our front kind of i honest it could go any any direction so personal preference on that one i'm gonna make a small little snip up top and on the bottom. And then just like we did for the back, we're going to line up our top and bottom notches. And then you're going to then work your way around. Oh, before I get too far ahead, make sure to reach inside and open your zipper up all the way. That's just gonna make the things a little bit easier when you go to sew your binding on or just being able to sew around it. 
So go ahead and add your clips to the top and bottom and then work these sides to all match up. Once you have it all clipped together, you're gonna go and sew this together around at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky trying to get this underneath. So starting on the side with the zipper might be a little bit easier to finagle that underneath, but once you get it under there, you'll do the 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now that you've got the front all sewn on, make sure we're going to then push it back underneath in the area that, so right around in the clipper, we're going to sew that at a quarter inch or maybe just under a quarter inch. Okay, now that we got our pre-stitch done, we're gonna bring our wire across into that air, same area that we did that pre-stitch. And just like we did on the back, we're going to then add our wire on top with our jelly binding or clear binding, whichever, you're, whichever one you decided to do. And you're just going to then add that on top and work your way around. And it's a little bit thinner of an area to add your bind, your light to sit on top of, but you just work around, make sure to clip it really good as you go. As you get back to the very beginning of where you started, you're going to grab your wire and then a little, so not all the way to where it exactly meets, you're gonna go a little bit shorter because you need to leave room for your cap. And we're going to then cut the light wire. And then that cap, you want to, what, now what did I do with it? Uh -oh. There it is. So you're gonna add your cap back on. If you're not able to add your cap back on, you can add a small piece of like heat shrink. So then you would just cut it to be a little bit bigger, about the size of the cap. You set it on top and then you just take a lighter and then you just kind of wiggle the lighter around it and then the tubing will shrink around the end. So you could use like a piece of white heat shrink or you could use a small piece of electrical electrical tape as well for that. And then you trim off your excess of your jelly binding. And then finish clipping that in place. So then we find a spot to start on and we're gonna do this like we did on the back at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And when I get back down to this part, I'll jump back on and show you guys how to do this one because it's a little bit trickier than the doing it on the back because the back, you could actually see it. On this time, it's gonna be where you can't see it, unfortunately. So it'll be a little bit trickier. So go ahead and find an area to start and I will, and then I'll show you this part when we get to it. So as you're coming up to your light wire, you wanna stick your hand inside of the bag and you wanna feel where your wire is coming across. So, and then make sure to pull it where it's actually in line because it's really easy for it to go off and be crooked. So you wanna make sure it's in line and you wanna put your finger on the inside of the bag. You can see my hand inside and you wanna press down on that wire, so that way you're feeling where it's at. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna jump across here. Okay, push. Yep, that's clear. And that's, that's pretty much what it is. You just feel for it. And then when you feel like you're there, you just jump across. And that's the nice thing about having that, doing that little pre-stitch. Even if you did have a bigger jump, it's not a big deal because it's already sewn right there. And then once you get past that jump, then you just continue on sewing up the rest of the way. Once you finish doing your binding, go ahead and trim off all of the excess of it. Okay, it's all done. Now, just the... <laughs> the pain in the butt part of turning this bag out. 
Should be interesting. Well, here I go. Once you get it mostly turned out, go ahead and then you're going to push out all of your seams and then kind of give them up, like roll them a little bit. This will help to get everything to line up. You're just pushing everything out. Take your time doing this because then it will make help it make it look the best. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. I am so excited for this. All right, so go ahead and add your battery pack and then we'll go test out the lights. Here it is all lit up. I apologize, I can't get my camera to focus on these guys for some reason, so I apologize for the blurriness. There will be pictures after this little ending so that way you guys can see what it looks like, not blurry. But, oh my gosh, it is so cool. I love how this Pokeball turned out. This is definitely, if you're a Pokemon fan, this bag right here would make a awesome gift for somebody that loves Pokemon. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial of the Light Up So Long Pokemon Ball bag from k &A. And if you guys have made it this far, I hope you guys can consider liking and subscribing. Have a good one. This is a, just a quick how to do the circle for the Pokemon bag, for Kirby, or for any of the circle so long bags that I do for k and This is how you would turn them into a backpack. So you would take your D-ring tabs, and instead of them going in between the gusset and the zipper gusset, once you find, clip that together. So once you find your center, you're gonna go off to one side with one of your D-rings. And I will measure that real quick. So this one, just kind of going straight from the center to the edge of the D-ring, that's five inches. So it's just this one's not completed, so we're just gonna pretend that that one is completed. So go for five inches. Wait, is it really five inches? No. Sorry, it's only three inches. I was looking at the five going the wrong direction. So glad I double checked that. So three inches over. And then you'll sew those on to your back. So those will give you your back D-rings to where your webbing will go into. Then for at the top, you'll take two pieces of webbing so because if you're making this backpack for like a kid, you could probably get away with do using 36 inch length straps. If you're gonna make this for an adult, I would suggest going larger, probably a yard and a half for the straps. So I'm just gonna clip one. So you're gonna angle it outwards for at the center, top center for both of them. And then if you wanted to, to give yourself like a little handle, you could cut, like I'm just using some waterproof canvas, so we're pretending here. You could cut like a small eight inch long piece of webbing. And you can clip that one there. We'll just say that that's clipped, that's eight inches. And so I'm just going to either side of the webbing. And then you're gonna sew all of the, oh, you'll baste all of that on, trim off that, that excess that hangs over. So you'll trim off those little corners and then heat seal those down. You'll base those on in place. So then we have those. And then when we do your slide adjusters, when you finish your bag all together, so if everything is sewn on, you'll take your strap, you'll go through one side of your webbing or one side of your adju your adjuster down the other side. We're gonna go through the D-ring at the bottom 
And then I like to come back up on the upper side of the bar. So we have our bar here in the middle. If I can hold everything still. Stop dropping everything. Okay, come on. Let's. I want to be able for everybody to see. Okay, so I like to go on the upper side. So I go up, over the bar, and then down. And then you'll pull slack through. And then you can either do your box with an X. You could do just an X. You could do a line across right there. So let me clip that. So you'll do that for both straps. And so that will give you your backpack strap. So if you're going to be doing a backpack, you need two slide adjusters and two D-rings. You won't be needing the swivel clasps on this one. Unless you're going to be doing a convertible one, then that's a whole other whole other thing but this is at least how you would make this into a backpack it's a very quick quick down and dirty little explanation on how to make this a backpack